Welcome, Dr. Grant Colfax. Well, thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as you know, we are seeing a surge of COVID cases, hospitalizations, and unfortunately, deaths across the country. And this surge is more widespread and serious than ever before. Unfortunately, here in San Francisco, we are also seeing an increase in our cases. Um, we are in a surge that has the potential to overwhelm our local healthcare system, further reverse our reopening, and force us back to shelter in place. Unfortunately, here in San Francisco, we are also. And while we have taken some actions to negate the increase in cases, such as halting indoor dining and non essential office use, our local healthcare system, further reverse our reopening, and force us back. To shelter we need to enter place. this holiday week with a sense of urgency and commitment to stopping the spread of the to negate the increase in cases. So let's look at some data. Could we have the first slide, please? We need to enter this holiday week with a sense of urgency and commitment to stopping. So as you can see on this slide. Since the beginning of October, we have experienced a steep increase in our rate of cases. This shows how quickly the virus is spreading throughout our city. Importantly, this rate of increase is higher than we experienced during our summer surge of cases. Next slide. As this slide shows, during the week of October 12th, we had 217 people diagnosed with COVID-19. Look at the rate of it, look at the increase in our total number of cases over the next few weeks. For instance, the week of November 16th, we had 768 newly diagnosed cases of COVID-19 in San Francisco. If we continue on this trajectory, a nearly quadrupling of cases over a month our healthcare system could soon be struggling to deal with the burden of the virus. And we will have many more people in the hospital and diagnosed with COVID-19. Yesterday, the state issued a limited shelter in place order for those counties in the most restrictive reopening color tier, purple. This limited shelter in place order requires that non-essential work movement and gatherings stop between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. And I think we can take the slide down, thank you. San Francisco is currently assigned to the red tier, a tier down from purple and not immediately impacted by the order. However, our current case rate, as you just saw on the, on the last slides, place us on the trajectory to be in the purple tier, potentially as early as Sunday. At that point, we will need to abide by the state's shelter in place order. And if and when we are assigned to the purple tier, additional reopening rollbacks will be required by the state, including closing indoor gyms, indoor museums and movie theaters, and houses of worship. We will also have to further limit capacities in retail outlets. Now, just three weeks ago, we were in the state's least restrictive tier, yellow. And now we are on track to be in the most restrictive tier, purple. This is indicative of how fast this virus is spreading in our city. But we can change the course of this surge. Our individual actions can flatten the curve. We have done this twice and we can do it again. After all, we are San Francisco and we have shown the country how to fight COVID. Let's show them once again. We are heading into Thanksgiving week, one of the most highly traveled weeks of the year in normal times. But let me be clear, this year, do not travel. Stay at home with your immediate household. Now I know we've had a very long spring and summer, and the temptation to gather is high at this time of year. But our actions now will dictate what happens this winter. Do not gather 
especially indoors. And do not use testing to determine whether you can travel or visit with people outside of your immediate household. Remember, and I can't emphasize this enough, people who test negative can still harbor the virus if they are earlier in their infection or if they are exposed to the virus after the test. That is why people exposed to the virus must quarantine for 14 days. A negative test should not be the excuse to put yourself or others at risk. Let's find ways to gather remotely. Zoom, Teams, social media, calls. Send or post photos of how you are celebrating and what you are serving and doing with your immediate household. We can still connect and be with each other. If you are going to gather, and again, I strongly recommend it against it, keep it to no more than six people and keep it outdoors and keep those masks on. The choices we, you, I make in the next two weeks will determine the trajectory of this holiday season. The safest way to celebrate Thanksgiving is to stay at home with members of your own immediate household. The best way to protect your loved ones and your community is to celebrate with members of your own household. Do not turn your holiday celebration into a spreader event. Let's work together to flatten the curve again. Remember, we know how to slow the spread of this virus. Please protect yourself, your family, your friends, and your community by wearing your mask, doing activities outdoors, staying physically distanced, practicing good hygiene, and not gathering for the holidays. Across this nation, we are seeing people suffer many levels because of this virus, physically, in terms of mental health, financially. We can support our loved ones, our neighborhoods, and our community by slowing the spread of the virus and preventing the further rollback of more activities. The best gift we can give this season is the gift of good health so that we can all be here for the vaccine. But for now, please be cautious, be diligent, and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Colfax, for your remarks. We will now begin the Q&A portion when you're ready. Yes, I'm ready, thank you. Okay. okay, your first question comes from Joshua Sabatini with San Francisco Examiner. If San Francisco moves to the purple tier on Sunday, as you forecast, when would the curfew have to go into place? So um, we are getting clarification um, from the state on that, uh, but it would be relatively soon after uh, we are, if we are moved into the purple tier by the state. And I just want to be clear that um, we do not have, um, uh, we're not absolutely confident that that would happen this Sunday. It could happen as, as quickly um, as Sunday, but um, soon after that, um, and we, will, we can confirm this, but I believe it's within 48 hours that we would need to implement the curfew. Thank you. The following questions are from Kathy Novak with KCBS. Can you talk about how a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew helps to slow the spread? Well, I think we know that, you know, unfortunately for the, for the last 10 months now, we know that the more activity there is across um, a region, the, the virus spreads more quickly. So I think that the goal of a curfew is to decrease activity um, and therefore to decrease the spread of the virus. Um, and perhaps, you know, a, a curfew um, would, would help uh, prevent uh, more, more people from, from activity, particularly in area in, in, in time in the late hours of the night where more high risk activity may occur. Um, I think it's important to emphasize this is a state determined curfew. Um, and uh, we will need to follow that if we go into the purple tier like many of the uh, other counties in the region uh, are doing. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up, is there data to show that gatherings and or activities during this time are a significant factor in the surge in San Francisco? Well, we know, again, we know from the science data and facts that the more people gather, 
um, in, 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 in close settings and close quarters, um, the more transmission occurs. Um, so this is, you know, this is now uh, uh, very clear. And the more we can avoid uh, the inter intersection of, of close gatherings, uh, indoor activities, uh, the, the mingling of, of, of households, uh, the more we will slow the spread of the virus. People um, need to move around less, um, avoid the gatherings, uh, keep those masks on. This is not the time to travel. We are in the middle of uh, the worst surge that we've seen for, for of this pandemic uh, uh, locally and, and nationally. We each need to do our part to slow the spread of the virus. Okay, uh, your next question is from Janie Har with the Associated Press. Any concerns that people from outside San Francisco will come here because we don't have a curfew? Well, I think that we're really emphasizing, and we've put out a travel advisory um, with regard to both travel um, to and from uh, the city. We do not uh, recommend that people travel. Um, and uh, we hope that people will, will heed um, that, that, that strong recommendation that people do not travel uh, for the holiday. Uh, we know that, uh, again, uh, the more people travel, the greater the risk is of the spread of the virus. And uh, we are in this, this third surge. There's no question now. This is not a, a matter of uh, if it will happen. It is happening. And you know we've had great news on the vaccine front uh, recently, but we need to ensure that is, uh, if, you know, people are here for the vaccine. And that means that we still need to take precautions. Uh, this is a, a, a very serious pandemic, and this is not the year to travel to be with your family. Okay, your next question is from Heather Knight with San Francisco Chronicle. Why have cases spiked so much in the past few weeks? What is the behavior, businesses, business types, or event types fueling the surge? Yes, I, I appreciate the question. We don't have the level of precision to say, you know, that this one activity versus, you know, another specific activity um, has fueled the spread. I think what is clear, though, as we've seen in our, our last two surges, is uh, people uh, become more complacent. Uh, when numbers of our in number of, of cases go down in the city, I know, you know San Franciscans are are watching our numbers very carefully, um, and uh, consciously or subconsciously, I think it's human behavior when things are not as um, uh, serious that people um, may may back down significant numbers of people may back down on on, on precautions. Um, so, and we've also, I mean, remember, we've also opened up quite a few activities um, since, since uh, we were taken off the state watch list uh, in September. And we've always said, you know, as we open up uh, more activities, there is a greater risk of transmission of the virus. So it's not unexpected that we would have um, some more cases, but I think what's really important here is that curve, that steep slope of increase in cases. So we are being as responsive as we, uh, we are being responsive to that increase and uh, reducing the higher risk activities that we had reopened. Um, and again, if we go into the purple tier, we will have to do that further. Thank you. Your next question is from Aaron Alday, also with the San Francisco Chronicle. Can you share a forecast for COVID hospitalizations in San Francisco? So um, our reproductive rate um, is above one now um, in terms of the propagation of the virus across, across um, the city. Uh, if our numbers uh, continue to go up at this rate, um, we could conceivably have uh, hundreds of people um, in the hospital uh, by late December, early January, according to our modeling. Uh, that is also consistent with what we saw during the summer surge. Uh, so we are on track now to exceed the hospitalizations uh, that we've had in the, in the prior surges, unless again, we uh, push, push, flatten the curve uh, again for a third time. So we know how to do it. I'm hopeful that we can do it, but if this trajectory continues, we will be um, in a situation where hundreds of people uh, in San Francisco could be hospitalized for COVID-19, which is why um, we are emphasizing that everyone needs to do their part, um, particularly uh, with regard to the holiday season and particularly with the fact that we've been living with this uh, pandemic for 10 months now. Um, but you know, this virus spreads very quickly and uh, we've got to do everything we can to, to flatten the curve and slow the spread of the virus so that we, 
we minimize as much as possible um, that hospital surge that again, uh, we are seeing across the country, um, hospital systems getting overwhelmed. Uh, so far, we've avoided that here in San Francisco, which is why we've had uh, such uh, relative success in terms of uh, morbidity and mortality, but it is entirely plausible that unless we slow the spread of the virus, uh, we could be there. This concludes today's press conference. Thank you, Dr. Colfax, for your time. Thank you. Be safe, everyone. Bye-bye.